Uh, g'day Stephen, uh, welcome back again. Thanks Tom, good to be here. So today I understand we're looking at the activity, di- activity diagram in Enterprise Architect. Yeah, that's right Tom, it's a uh, unified modelling language diagram, one of the behavioural diagrams. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a, a look at how easy it is to create one of these diagrams uh, in the tool. Uh, as always, we need to change our uh, perspective. At the moment, I've got it set at structural, uh, UML structural. Uh, the activity diagram is a behavioural diagram, so I'm going to uh, change that perspective there now. Uh, and again, as always, I'm going to put in a uh, package uh, for contain our activity model. Uh, there it is there. The dialogue has popped up. I'm going to choose an activity diagram and say create uh, diagram. My toolbox toolbox isn't visible there. Let me just turn that, uh, display that. So I had that uh, tucked away. Give me a bit more, uh, a bit more view of the, the diagrams. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down here the control nodes. We have a number of different, uh, different palettes here, uh, and we've got activity uh, objects control nodes. So the first one I'm going to put on is an initial. But Tom, before that, one of the things I want to do is um, I want to set this model up to have to use partitions, uh, commonly referred to in uh, you know the vernacular as as a swim lane. So uh, there is a partition here. I'm going to drag that onto the uh, onto the diagram, and um, it's got a name there. I'm just going to ignore the name, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that. So I didn't want to give it a name, and the reason is that I'm going to right mouse click on it. Uh, and I'm going to go advanced and I'm going to say instance classifier. So this is like which uh, which element classifies or, or, or sets the type for this, uh, for what's going on in, in here. Remember the swim lanes are about, usually about responsibility. So who's responsible for the things that are happening? And if you think about the activity diagram in, in really basic terms, it's a little bit like a flow chart, but a much, much more sophisticated uh, diagram than just a simple humble flow chart. Uh, so I'm going to choose an instance classifier and the I'm going to go to my class, my use case model rather, and I'm going to choose um, the motorist. So this is what the um, motorist is going to be doing. So the, the swim lanes are going to show the responsibility for the various um, the various activities or things that are going on in the um, in, in this model. So I'll choose motorist there and you notice an enterprise architect pops uh, motorist up there uh, automatically. So that's again another example, Tom, of linking the uh, the elements that we already have in the model, rather than just I could have just typed motorist in there. But this creates uh, a much more articulated uh, model. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to put the payment system uh, in here. So again, I'll put another partition in there, and um, again I'll do the same thing, and I'll um, go in here and go to the advanced and I'm looking for the payment system now. So the instance classifier, this time we won't choose the use case model, this time we'll choose the component model and we'll choose payment system there. Um, so I'm gonna just uh, line those guys up and the other one that I want is uh, is going to be um, the meter controller. So let's put another partition on and we'll do the same thing again uh, and we'll put meter controller there. So just a very small amount of um, setting this up we're not creating um, anything other than the swim lanes and we're just reusing uh, reusing those things. So the meter controller's there, let's put that on and um, let's give that a little bit more, uh, a little bit more height. We might have a few things going on in there. Now, uh, I'm gonna multi-select these guys and um, uh, make them the same uh, width, not the same height. And I'm using the, holding the control key down, Tom, and using the, um, the right arrow just to create a little bit more um, a little bit more uh, space inside those um, boxes. So let's just bring this one down a little bit as well. So we're, we're kind of set up now uh, to start working. Now, this is a bit of a, a, a tip from, um, you know, from the, the desk of someone who's had lots of experience. And uh, in other tools, uh, this is a very difficult operation, but Enterprise Architect makes it very easy uh, because what can happen is if I start putting elements onto this diagram now, um, the, they can get um, they, they can get kind of when you start moving them it becomes difficult because the swim lanes um, you might be multi-selecting the swim lanes so what I do is um, I'm just going to select all of the swim lanes so I can multi-select all of those and I'm going to choose um, this behavior and I'm going to make them non-selectable so that means that I can't select them uh, and so they're sort of frozen if you like there 
And that enables me to, um, to, to much more easily work with the diagram. I'm gonna put this uh, initial activity on there and I'm gonna call it um, session start. So uh, that's there, I've got my session start and uh, I'm gonna use the quick linker. So I just simply drag out with that little arrow. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a control flow to an action. This is a little uh, a little thing that um, people often don't realize with the uh, with this diagram is that even though it's called an activity diagram, the elements that you're putting on here uh, are actually uh, actions. You can put activities on, but when we're connecting up flows of things with control flows, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna create another element there, control flow to another action, and I'm gonna call it um, enter um, red gis creation number and uh, you know we've got these uh, elements now we've got a little bit of work to do here Tom we're going to create a number of elements um, what we might do is just uh, fast forward to uh, to a point in this model that um, we've got um, you know got something more interesting to look at other than just creating these boxes right oh, so I guess by the, the the power of video magic oh cool there we go yeah, so uh, Tom, we've done a little bit of uh, work there. The this one is uh, this this connection now is a little bit uh, different. I'm just going to uh, drag in, and this time I don't want another action. I want a gateway. So it's a control flow, and I'm going to go to a, uh, a what's called a, a decision in the unified modeling language. So the decision I'm going to call it is uh, payment um, payment uh, presented. And I'll put a question mark on. Know that that's a a question, and then uh, from that decision point, I've got you know two possible things that can happen. One of them can go. Uh, I'll go this way, and I'll say um, create a control flow to an action, and it's accept payment. And um, the other way that it could go is um, it could go here, and I'll say we'll display a, a message saying you know something like um, display display message remember with these diagrams we're not trying to get down into the, into the, the fine nitty-gritty of everything we're just wanting to get an overview of um, what's going on with this particular sequence of, uh, of things so that's the uh, the gateway the interesting thing about the gateway uh, is that uh, I can I could just write uh, something on uh, this connector and just write a name on it but enterprise architect has got uh, this panel called constraints and so what I can say here is there's a guard the guard means uh, can can we proceed to the next action or you know or not and so I'm going to put the simple yes uh, or no on it so payments been presented yes so we'll accept uh, the payment so that's on that particular transition and you notice that it will pop up there in uh, in square brackets and for this one here um, we're going to say no it wasn't presented and so the system needs to you know do something to display uh, some other um, other messages. Now we're gonna we could uh, continue on with this, uh, Tom. Again, we might uh, we might just take a little uh, break, and um, I'll we'll, we'll show the completed diagram. All right, so time for some magic again. Oh, cool. So we've got our diagram finished now, Stephen. Um, what what what's that? What's that actually showing us now? What, what what's the complete flow? Okay, so um, this complete flow is is showing. Um, a, the the notion of someone um, approaching the parking meter, initiating a session, and that's typically by um, you know by tapping on the screen. And we don't put those kind of details into this model. Can we, we tend to just um, put an expression? Most of the uh, the names you'll see are kind of a verb phrase, like initiate session, starting with a verb and then you know a noun. Um, enter registration number, enter duration details, view the cost, uh, and then the uh, the responsibility is handed over to um, the payment system. It says it's waiting for payment. Has the payment been presented? So, you know, the user would then tap uh, with their card, their debit or credit card, or uh, with their mobile phone using the near field communication facility in the phones. Uh, and then um, the media controller uh, takes over then. <clears throat> the person goes off to their uh, to their meeting or to their, uh, or to a cafe and the media controller then is sitting there checking for time and it's going through a sort of a, a, uh, a loop there saying is it more time remaining, um, check the time remaining. Uh, when, when the time is not, um, when, there's, when it's expired then it will um, display a message again and um, 
you know, the meter might then go back into um, an expired state or, or an available state. Yeah, it's interesting that you're talking about states because we have seen the state diagram for, for this meter system uh, in the previous video. In that yeah. one, we, we're actually able to simulate the, the diagram. Can we do the same considering this is a behavioral diagram as well? Yes, uh, Tom, it, we can. And remember, always remember our friend, the context menu, which comes from a right mouse click. Um, and uh, let me just get that there. And I can um, say execute simulation. Now, Enterprise Architect has got uh, a number of different levels of simulation. So um, we're going to look at this manual simulation. So if we look at that, I'll just hit the manual simulation and you'll see um, it's taken uh, what's happening there. Um, it's stepping through those. When it comes to a gateway, which is a, or a decision, um, gateways are the term that they use in business process uh, model and notation and decision uh, decisions are what's used in, in UML. Um, it comes to, and presents us with uh, an option that knows uh, what the outgoing transitions or control flows are. So in this case, we'll say um, accept the payment. Um, payment gets accepted. We come to check remaining time. Is there time remaining on the meter? Um, we'll say, yes, there is time remaining. Um, and so we'll, um, we'll uh, choose that one. And again, we'll come through to the decision and we can keep looping through that a number of times. Uh, and I chose that one to display the message. Now that's a very, um, a very the, the simplest form of simulation, but we have all sorts of other more sophisticated simulations, which is true for the state machine as well. So, so the value of that then, obviously we've been able to test that our process it makes sense and, and get all the way through to the end. So yep. that, that could almost be something we could hand off to someone downstream to say, you know, here's how we want our system to, to behave. And, and we've been able to validate that early on with that simulation. So that's that's really cool. I uh, also yep. noticed over in the um, the, the project browser, all, all we can see, I'm assuming that's the swim lanes we can see there. Uh, well, where, where's our activities been stored? Yeah, uh, great question, uh, Tom. Enterprise Architect has done the work for us. We put our uh, our activities and our other elements, like our our decisions, um, into each swim lane. And so, Enterprise Architect has um, has mim mimicked that. I can change the order of these. I'll put the motorists at the top, uh, and you can see that um, those details are um, inside the um, the swim lane. So that's the kind of neat thing about. The tool as well. If it wasn't, if that didn't happen, we would end up with, you know, a whole, uh, you know, a, a large number of um, actions and things all, um, you know, all, all under the same package, and that would be um, confusing. But that's a very, uh, that's a very powerful thing. Uh, you know, the people that are responsible for uh, can see this. So, um, you know, you might have um, people looking at this particular scenario, and, and you might have a, a UX designer, like a, a user experience designer, that's interested in the motorist perspective and saying, okay, well, what does the motorist has to do? Is it easy for them to enter their registration number? Does the, you know, does the little keyboard uh, pop up and it's the right, you know, it's the right resolution for, uh, you know, any person like an elderly person as well um, to enter their details. Um, and then, you know, we, the payment system might be another team of developers um, and they might be uh, looking at how we, how they implement this and the same with the, uh, the meter controller. So, uh, yeah, very, very powerful, Tom. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for that, Stephen. Um, to everyone, thanks again for your time. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe on these videos. Uh, it really helps us uh, keep keep uh, chugging along. If there's any topics you'd like us to see discussed in a future video, please feel free to ask that in the comments as well, and we'll get there. So again, thank you very much, Stephen. Appreciate your time today. Always good to be here, Tom. Thank you.